Let's talk about the book, <clears throat> Messy and Foolish. I read it when you first released it. Um, I read it again over the last week. Uh, incredibly impactful. What does it mean to be messy and foolish? <laughs> well, for me, I wrote the book at a time in my life where I was very passionate about the church. A lot of my friends leaving, my peers, you know, leaving the church and just feeling like the maintenance mode of everything going on and um, was not going to change anybody's mind. Um, the status quo was not changing anybody's mind. Um, and then all of the energy that was spent toward it, I felt like was very um, insular. It was, it was within this group of people that all believed and thought alike and was not really, you know, breaking outside of that bubble very successfully. Um, and so it, it was just in a lot of my work, a lot of my blogging at the time and things like that was very much that it was within this audience. And I love this. It's my people, you know, and, and I love them. But when it comes to sort of these efforts to reach outside that, um, I just was really motivated to figure out like, how do we, how do we do that? And how do we fix some of these bigger problems in the church? And it was, it was kind of a pep talk to myself, the book, you know, to, to kind of remind myself that. Um, you know, some of the things I've been saying that, that, um, we need to be doing something worthy of dropping your nets and, and, and going, you know, um, we should look more like people in love. Um, I think, uh, with Elvis, the Elvis song that says, wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. Um, like, I feel like we should look more like fools rushing in and, and we're not. And St. Paul says the, uh, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Um, there's a, there's a logic that transcends the world, the wisdom of the world, um, that God, that we, we don't understand. Um, and that is about something much bigger than, than anything in this world and in this life. And our, our lives need to reflect that. Um, and so I think the mess part is, you know, we need to rethink how we're doing things now, you know, um, that what the status quo is, is not working. It's, it's in many ways working against us. And so we need to be really willing to rethink it. Um, and the foolishness is really tapping back into that, um, just deeper wisdom that God gives us that the stuff that doesn't make sense to the world, you know, um, that death is a, is a doorway to the next world, not something that we're supposed to just avoid at all costs forever. Um, that, you know, we're supposed to love our enemies, that we forgive people over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, that, that we care for the, the least among us, the, the most vulnerable, the tiniest, um, people. I mean, all of those things that I think are the things that are most attractive about the church and that offer really the most appealing, valuable thing, you know, this, this, uh, way out of this world, you know, <laughs> that, that we've over, that Jesus has overcome death. Um, it just felt like it was missing from so much of, of what we talked about. Um, but again, I think a lot of what I realized through that work, because I, I came in, in my adulthood, as I sort of claim the faith as my own, um, was very, being an engineer, I love the apologetics. I love the reasoning of the faith. It's beautiful and deep and rich. And so that was very attractive to me. And at that time, that's what I thought the answer was. You know, I just need to go explain this to everybody because if you explain it, how can you, it just makes sense. Right. And that, like that worked for me at that point in my life, you know, the way it all came together, that was what I needed. Um, but we all talk past each other and nobody seems to agree that it's that straightforward when you look at it. Well, why is that? And so much of it is um, that the way we communicate things is so much more than just those words I'm saying, you know, it's, 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 have I earned their attention yet? Have I earned their respect yet? Have I earned their trust yet? Have I established myself as a, a stable and worthy place of, you know, getting important information from, um, do I have a relationship with you where you even care to listen to me? I think that first step of even giving you the time of day 
you know, starts with just loving people um, and not to some end so that you can, you know, tell them something, but just because you love them. And, and I think that emphasis on that part of it, I know for me was lacking and, um, you know, needed a, a pep talk.